So now that we know the basics of movement, we can work on adding some logic to make our projects a little more advanced. And as you think about this, think about how you can use if-then logic to have students create different stories and things like that, or interactive projects that show their learning. So we'll talk a little bit about that as we go through. So right now, as you can see, I've got what is beginning to become a game here. I have a ball going around the outside, and then I have this randomly appearing, or at least apparently a randomly appearing, bowl of cheesy poofs just jumping around the outside. So the whole goal here of this game, as I've thought it through, is that the cat is going to try and get the cheese puffs before they move, and if it gets hit by the ball, that's game over. So that is what we're going for here. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I put this together. So let me do that by getting rid of the code that I've actually put in and starting from scratch. And no pun intended there. So now that I've saved that code, I can delete it. And this is a backpack area where you can save your code. I'm just putting it there just so I have it and can get it back the way I want it to go. So I get rid of that there too. And if you click and drag it over the middle, it disappears. So let me show you then what I've done. The only code that I've added to the ball is I added a go to code. So let me explain how that works. For your sprites, they start at a place in space on this coordinate plane. And when you have them moving, they don't automatically reset unless you tell them to. So that is where I like to get my sprites to a place where I'm happy with them. And then use the green flag control, and then in motion using the go to control. And wherever they're right, where they are right now, is what this will show. So wherever that cat is, that's that. And so when I press the green flag, the cat will always go back to the center. So that's what I've done with the ball here. Whenever I click on the green flag, the ball goes back to that spot. So now I want the ball to go around the outside. And this is where the control comes in. I want it to do it for an indefinite period of time. So once again, I need my control. I'm going to be using the green flag here. I need my event, and then in control, I'm going to actually use a forever block. So forever is a loop. What it says is that forever do this. That's what we want. We want it to do something forever. We don't want to worry about stopping. There are also a few other blocks in here. You have your repeat. You have your if then. If then else, wait until, repeat until. And those will be coming into play in a later video where you'll see some of what that does. So what we want this to do is we want this to go around the outside. We already know it's starting here. So we're going to go into motion. We're going to use a block called glide. So when I pull glide out, what it does is it glides to that spot. So right now it's just the spot it's at. So if I were to move it and I click the green flag, it did a glide to that spot. And since this is wrapped in a forever block, if I move it, it will always glide back to that location. And that's actually where the go-to is. So it's kind of where it's stuck. All right. So with that being said, we want it to go around the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this, get rid of this, and I'm going to move it to the corners. So here's the first corner it will go, and here's my new glide. You can tinker around with the time that it takes to glide as well. And I'm going to click and drag it over here, click up the new one. And if you're looking for precision, if you want it along the same line, you can make sure that this is just mirrored. So instead of that being 211, we can call it negative 210 to try and keep things equal. And the same here on the back, since it should be at the same y coordinate. You can do that. And then so forth, following the process as we go. It doesn't need to be exact right now, but if you're a stickler for me, like me, you could tinker with it a little bit. So now when we press the green flag, now it works its way around the outside like that. So that's number one, and that's using the forever control, and that is going to keep that moving. And once again, our cat still moves with the arrow keys. The next thing we want to do is provide a goal for the cat. And so what we're going to use is uh, the cheesy puffs right here. We're going to grab the cheesy puffs and 
What I want the Cheesy Puffs to do, in my mind, is to make this a challenging game, is to have them randomly appear on the outside, so that way the cat has to try and grab them before the ball hits the cat. And then eventually we're going to add points to this. So the Cheesy Puffs are really big, so we're going to actually venture into the looks section for the first time. So I'm going to start it off with the green flag, go into looks, and I'm actually going to be looking for set size. And go ahead and set the size to whatever percentage that we want of the hole. I think it would look good about half size. So I'll do that. And when I click on the green flag, there we go. It's about half size. Move it in the position I want it to go. I'll go back into motion and grab my go to to make sure that it's in the right place. And then thinking down the line, I want this to be a random encounter type situation. So you don't exactly know where it's going to go. It's going to take some time to get there. Uh, but in that case, I actually want it to be hidden when we start. And we'll have it show later. So now we have that here, but we want to have it moving. So we're going to want to do something similar to what we have with the ball, where it's always going around. So in that case, let's go ahead and stop this. I'm going to pull out a forever loop once again. And inside that forever loop, we need to get this jumping around. And we also need to include some time. So we've got the wait time category here. And let's say four seconds. And then I need to choose another spot where I want it to appear. So how about right there? If I go into my motion, I can choose out go to. And then I can have it in looks show. So then it will jump there. But that's kind of boring just to go to one place. So we want it to work its way around. So once again, we'll keep using the wait time. And actually, I'm going to duplicate the blocks here. Because I know I'm going to want a couple of these. I'm going to want four different spots. And I don't need it to keep showing because it's showing once. So I'm just going to get rid of these sections of code. I just saved myself some time, though, on having to drag out three code blocks and type in four on every one of them. Because that, to me, takes a little more time. And then I just need to get the go-to's for a few different spots. So why don't we move it here. And I'll grab the go-to for that. And we'll have it move here. And I'll grab the go-to for that. And then let's have it move here. And I'll grab the go-to for that as well. So now, we should have the makings of a little program. The ball is working around the outside. And oh, there's a cheesy poofs and make it with the cat to grab them. And maybe you'll see that four seconds is too long. Maybe the moving's too choppy. That's all things you can dicker with. So now we've used some control blocks to get a little bit of a game going, but we're still missing a few pieces. So come back for the next video to see how you can add different conditionals broadcast and broadcasting to add a little bit of interactivity to your game.